Hi, welcome to the 14-day weather forecast. Since my last update, we've had three named storms. Dudley, Eunice and Franklin. Can we expect any more during the next two weeks? As usual, I'll start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 22nd. At the outset, there are some showers in the north and the west of the UK, and some of those across Scotland are wintry. In the short term, a band of rain pushes south eastwards, and colder air follows it down from the northwest, and through Thursday, showers become widespread. Some of them are likely to be wintry, even down to low levels. I think the extent of the snow risk, which the GFS here is shown, is probably a little bit overstated, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Also, there's just a chance, I think, of the outbreaks of rain turning to sleet or snow for a short time on their back edge as they clear away southwards. In the days which follow, though, a ridge of high pressure builds up from the southwest, but it stays more changeable, more unsettled in the northwest of the UK with this Atlantic influence remaining. Also, it's worth noting at this point through the weekend, the isobars up there are tightly packed together still. That's indicating the potential for it to be very windy once more. But high pressure perhaps continuing to have more influence in the south and the east. And that general picture really continues to be the same as we go through the first half of next week. Outbreaks of rain do push southeastwards at times, but they weaken as they bump into that area of higher pressure. It's really the northwest and perhaps the north of the UK which remains under more of an Atlantic influence and therefore at greater risk of heavier spells of rain. Just to show a couple of jet stream charts associated with that animation, the first one, 18 GMT, Tuesday the 22nd, shows there's still quite a fierce jet there blowing across the North Atlantic and it towards Scotland, so it's a little bit further than it has been in recent days, a little bit further northwards than it has. Then moving forwards to Saturday the 26th, it's starting to veer off northwestwards and avoiding the UK as high pressure has more influence. Finally, on Tuesday the 2nd, the high pressure here, keeping things dry in southern and perhaps central Britain, but the jet stream there moving across parts of the northwest. So, as I mentioned, that's where the risk of heavier spells of rain will be the greatest. Winds as well aren't going to be such a feature as they have been recently in southern and eastern parts of Britain, at least I don't expect them to be through this first week, but at times in the northwest in particular it could still be very, very gusty or even stormy. Just as an example, this chart is for 21 GMT on Saturday the 26th. It's from the same GFS model which the sequence was generated from. And gusts there to the west of Scotland are 60 or 70, even a little bit higher there, miles an hour. So potentially gales or severe gales even, with that risk being higher as you head northwestwards in the UK. Even though in southern and central Britain it will be quite blowy at times, just not to the same extent that we've seen during the last week, fingers crossed at least. I mentioned there will be colder air moving down from the northwest uh, during the first couple of days of the week, so by Thursday, and this chart from the UKV model shows 850 HPA temperatures, the forecasts for them at 12 GMT on Thursday the 24th. It really illustrates that it is quite a cold pocket of air which is moving down values of air min minus 8, minus 9 Celsius quite widely. Remember these are about 1500 meters above sea level. They do suggest that it will be cold enough for sleet or snow to make it down to low ground, even perhaps in the southwest of the UK, as can be seen on the chart on the left here from the UKV model. Clearly though, the chance of snow is greatest in the northern half of the UK, and even there it's not as widespread as the GFS model was suggesting. I suspect this one will be closer to the mark. Central and eastern parts of England in particular probably have a mostly dry and bright day. Nonetheless, it's going to be a 
cold one. The temperature chart on the right shows forecast maximums. In Scotland, it's widely around 2 or 3 Celsius and lower than that over the highlands. As you head southwards, temperatures pick up a little bit, but even in southern counties, it's only 6 or 7 degrees. Quite a chilly day. In the days which follow, high pressure probably has more of an influence, and that could mean frost becoming more widespread, at least for a time. Just going to illustrate with a couple of charts from the GFS. This one, 06 GMT, Friday v 25th. If it's correct, then it's a very cold start in Scotland, minus 5, even minus 9 Celsius in places. Going forwards by 24 hours, so Saturday the 26th, and temperatures widely down to or just below freezing point in much of the UK. A frosty start to weekend if it is correct. Now, that frost risk may not last for too long. The chart here helps to illustrate why it's shown forecast wind gusts, based on data from the UK Met Office MOGREPS model, and I've annotated it. Often quite windy through the first week, but not extreme, so not akin to the wind speeds which Eunice produced. And for a time at least, we go from 30s, 40s perhaps, right down to much calmer conditions, and those coincide with the frosty night which for GFS was shown, because as for frost to form, as well as clear skies, winds need to drop away significantly. And the MOGREPS is suggesting that will be happening around the 26th, but the frost risk may not last for too long, because going forwards, there are indications there of it becoming windier once again. Going up to Glasgow, generally here it's a windier scene throughout the first week. Gusts of up to 60 miles per hour quite early on and then later again. But on the 25th or 26th, it also becomes a lot calmer for a short period of time, coinciding with the very cold night which the GFS model was showing in Scotland. Taking a look at the temperatures as a whole through the first week, using the MOGREPS data once more. In London, double figures to begin with. Through the days, it then turns colder for a time before temperatures trend upwards once more later on. Glasgow, again, a similar profile, but albeit at a lower level, single figures. Colder here for a couple of days, and then temperatures picking up later towards the end of the first week. Quite mixed. Generally, quite mild in the south. Apart from that colder interlude, temperatures closer to the average, more often in the north, as well as it being colder there for a time too. Rainfall. Using the GFS charts today, for one on the left, is showing accumulations for days 0 to 5, one on the right, days 0 to 10. In southern and eastern Britain, it's quite a dry picture. Volumes, even after 10 days, only 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 millimetres. In the northwest, though, it's much wetter. Western Scotland recording over 100 millimetres, if these are correct. I think, in general terms, they are well supported by the ensemble data and also the uh, European deterministic model run, which I'm, I'm not showing here today. So, do the deterministic models all support that GFS scenario at the end of the first week, which is high pressure, having some influence across southern and central parts of Britain in particular, more of an Atlantic influence continuing across the north, the possibility for some rain in all regions, it's just the wettest conditions in the northwest. The Canadian model, well, yes, it does show something similar, high pressure building up from the south. The German Icon model, once more, the general pattern is consistent. The European ECM, the same, broadly speaking, quite tightly packed isobars there in the north, indicating the potential for windy conditions, but the Broad scale pattern is, is a similar one. Finally, the UK Met Office global model. A little bit different here, high pressure centering perhaps further west in the Atlantic, 
maybe, just maybe this would lead to something colder down the line, but at this point, really, it's the same story with high pressure there to the west, but also to the south with more of a changeable or unsettled pattern across the north. Good agreement, therefore, at the end of week one for high pressure to be influencing things more in the south, low pressure and Atlantic uh, weather systems in general, keeping the more changeable and settled theme going further north. Well, what about the second week? As ever, it's all about trends and probabilities, not specifics. Starting with the 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London. Across the top, upper air temperatures, often close to or above the 30-year average. That's shown by the thick black line. The ensemble mean, the purple line, stays above it for most of the time. And I think in this, in this update, it is consistent with the general pattern that most of the runs are showing. Sometimes the ensemble mean isn't representative because it's been skewed by some extremely cold or extremely warm or mild runs within the, uh, within the, within the suite. But on this occasion, I think it's broadly speaking representing what most of the runs are going for. In terms of rainfall, well, there are a few spikes showing especially later on, but it's not a wet picture. It really fits in with those charts that I showed for accumulated rainfall from the GFS deterministic for days 0 to 10. Quite dry going into the second week, that theme continuing. And as I say, perhaps the risk of rain just increasing later on. I wouldn't expect it to be completely dry through the second week, if this is correct. It's just suggesting that rainfall amounts will be on the low side. Going up to Glasgow, across the top here, upper air temperatures fluctuating around the average, more so than they were on the London plot, so it's a little bit below to begin with, and then later on they're also dipping below that thick black line, but not particularly cold by any means. In terms of rain, there are more spikes showing here than there were on the London one, so wetter. Will it snow? I didn't bother talking about that on the London plot through week two because the snow row values were very low, but here they're also quite low, reaching a maximum of 10 out of 33 towards the end there. So I wouldn't expect snow to be a great problem in the northwest through the second week. Nonetheless, I would think the chance of hill snow in the northern half of the UK would be quite high on some days with those uh, 850 HPA temperatures fluctuating a little bit above and a little bit below the average, it would suggest that it will be cold enough for snow to remain a possibility over higher ground in the north of the UK. Two metre temperatures, so going back down to London, the data table here, the columns mostly made up of light greens and yellows. Of course, we are now getting towards the meteorological spring. In fact, we're in it, Wednesday the 2nd of March. Of course, the meteorological spring begins on the 1st. It's the astronomical one, which begins on March the 21st for 22nd. So naturally, temperatures are beginning to rise on average at this time of the year. Um, the yellows represent forecasts of between 11 and 15 Celsius for light greens, 6 and 10. A few dark greens still appear in. Those are runs which are going for maximums of between 1 and 5 Celsius. Glasgow, mostly light green here as well. More dark green though, still a little bit of blue there. Blue being the extremely cold runs, just I think 3% on Saturday the 5th represents one of the 33 runs which are counted here, so a very low chance. All in all, close to the average, I think some milder days, some colder ones, if this is correct. Looking at the uh, surface level pressure data table using the uh, GEFS data once again. This is for York. Oranges and light yellows making up the bulk of the columns through the second week. That's suggesting that high pressure will be influential, particularly in the southern half of the UK, because the general pattern is for it to be building from the south 
more of an Atlantic influence remaining across the north. On the whole, therefore, probably pressure above the average in the York area and southwards, closer to it as you go into the uh, further, further north in the UK. The 10-day GEFS Ensemble mean pressure forecast, Friday the 4th of March, this gives an indication of the possible pattern across the North Atlantic. High pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, it's that good old positive North Atlantic oscillation theme which we've seen for much of the winter really, and in many recent winters if the truth be told, that suggests that winds will be coming in from the west, the southwest, maybe some colder incursions of polar maritime air into the north on occasion. But generally, it's the default that we expect in the UK, average to mild conditions when taken as a whole. And that broad scale theme is supported by the European ensemble. High pressure here may be having more influence as well as it builds up from the south on some days. Finally, the pressure anomaly chart for days 10 to 15, so the last two uh, charts were for days 10. This is taking it forward and averaging out the following five days to generate the anomaly. Yellows across southern and central parts of the UK, suggesting higher than average pressure. Just a little bit of a negative anomaly here in the north, but all in all, fairly close to the norm higher, uh, significantly higher pressure over the Alps than, than the norm being forecast. Again, it does not suggest cold conditions. In fact, as we are going well, as we're going into March at this point through the first half, if we start to pull in winds from the southwest, there could be an early taste of spring on the cards. That looks more likely than a late beast from the east according to the computer model data at the current time. So to summarise the next two weeks, week one, outbreaks of rain clear south eastwards, they are followed by colder conditions and showers develop, many of them turn wintry, they will mostly be in the north and the west. High pressure then begins to build and for a time there is a widespread frost risk. Later on, it stays drier in the south and the east. It becomes wetter and windier once more in the north and the west. And some of the rain bands could push southeastwards across all regions, but they will be weakening as they move down into central and southern Britain. Week two, it's a mostly changeable theme, wettest and windiest in the northwest, and at times it could still be cold enough for hill snow across the northern half of the UK. High pressure will probably be having quite a lot of influence, especially in southern and central Britain, where significant dry periods are quite likely. Temperatures in the south, often close to or above the average, in the north, closer to it and sometimes below the norm. So there we have it. It's a mixed bag of weather on offer. High pressure though, probably beginning to have more influence at times, particularly in the south and the east, generally remaining more changeable or unsettled as you head northwestwards. Will we get another named storm through the forecast period? Of course, it's impossible to be certain at this range, as I always emphasize. On balance, though, I'm going to say probably not. However, I'm not discounting the possibility, and at times it could still be very windy, especially in the west and the northwest. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful and enjoyed it. If you did, then please remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thanks for watching now. Bye.